Hello and welcome to the Good Teaching Podcast. This is episode one of season two of the podcast and I'm so excited to be back. I'm your host, Dr. Toyin Ali. I have a PhD in math. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Georgia and I've won a couple teaching awards. I love talking about teaching. I love talking about active learning and today's episode is an awesome one. I'm excited to share it with you. So if you are unfamiliar with this podcast, Good Teaching is the podcast where we ask college instructors what are their most effective teaching practices and strategies. And today we're going to talk about how to get back into the swing of things, how to prepare for a new semester of teaching, right? We want to set ourselves up to be on the right track, to have a smooth semester, get as much planning as we need to get done to really set us up for a great first day of the semester. So before we jump into things, I want to share that this episode is sponsored by my brand new quiz. It's called the Independent Professor Teaching Style Quiz, and it's based on the idea that tenure and promotion isn't exactly the best measure of academic success and fulfillment, and instead we can actually find freedom and independence beyond our university jobs. And the best way that I know how to do it is to teach for ourselves and create our own independent self-hosted learning experiences. And I do believe that based on our personalities, there are some types of teaching styles and teaching offers that are better fit for our personalities. So that's exactly what this quiz is all about. It will tell you exactly which of the four types of teaching styles you have. It'll tell you some great benefits you have of that style as well as some challenges. And it will also recommend two to three self-hosted learning experiences type that will be perfect for you and your own teaching style. So I will put a link to this quiz in the show notes here or the description of the video if you're watching on YouTube. You can also find it on my website at drtoyanali.com forward slash teaching dash style. Let's get into the episode. So again, this episode is all about preparing for a successful semester of teaching. And like I begin everything, I always like to start with reflection. So thinking back on last semester, how did things go? What things went really well last semester and what things didn't go so well last semester? Take some time to think back and actually write these things down. So you want to think about, okay, in your classes, what things went really well in your classes and what things didn't go so well in your classes? And what about your schedule? Were you busy? Were you overwhelmed? Did you find yourself staying on campus later than you expected or working at home more than you hoped? What things did you really love about your schedule? Did you have a morning routine that you want to keep going in the future? It's important to kind of put yourself back into the vibe that you were in last semester and figure out what did you love about last semester and what did you not like as much about last semester. Once you've done your reflection, the second step is to review your student evaluations. I know this can be horrible to look at sometimes, but you're a little bit removed from the semester and it's a good idea to see what your students had to say before you go into the next semester. So pick out which comments you loved, like which ones were super helpful, which ones were positive, maybe start there. And then go into the negative comments and then specifically look for constructive feedback and really just focus on those. Are there some things that you could update? Were the students really busy all semester with no breaks? Were they unclear about what they should be doing in your class? That type of feedback is actually really helpful. I know when I looked at my reflections or my student evaluations, one student said, I really loved when we wrote our solutions up on the board, but we stopped doing that. And I felt like I understood more when we did that. That was super helpful. So I knew that I needed to make time for that next semester when I was teaching again. All right, so not all criticism of our students is unfounded. And so it's really important to pick out the criticism that's actually constructive and helpful, and then just kind of ignore the thoughts that are really more like personal and just mean spirited. So the next thing that you want to do is do a bit of goal setting. So what do you want this new semester to look like? So based on the things that really worked last semester, what are the things that you want to continue into this new semester? 
For example, did you do a lot of group work last semester and did that go really well? You might want to continue doing that in this upcoming semester. And think about what will you do differently in your classes? Maybe some things didn't work as well and maybe you want to change them, tweak them, update them. How will you change things around? How will you do things a bit differently this semester? In my classes, in my pre-calculus class, I actually give a quiz every single week in my classes, but I know not everyone's on every single week. Not everyone has all the time to study every single week. So I do drop the two lowest quiz scores at the end of the semester, no matter if it's a zero, no matter what the score is. If it's the two lowest, I drop it. And then I have some other categories like written homework and I have these exam reflections that students do. I'm going to try out something new this semester. I'm going to put all three of those items because they're all like written work. I'm going to put them in the same grade category. That way the students maybe won't panic as much about the quizzes. So this is something I'm testing out um, this semester that I want to try a little differently. So written quizzes, which will happen in class written homework, which there'll be about five of them um, in the semester, and their exam reflections. I'm gonna wrap them up into one grade category and still drop the lowest two items in that category. And I'm curious to see how my students feel about it, and I'm curious to see how the grades fall out. Will the students be a little less stressed about the weekly quizzes? Because I've noticed some of my students start to panic way more um, in the last few semesters, so I want to test this out. So what things do you want to test out this semester? Try something a little differently. And then also, what new things have you learned? What new things do you want to try out? Maybe some new active learning techniques and strategies. Now here, I love to talk about active learning, which is really just getting my students engaged throughout the whole class. It's like the best experience. It makes class go by so fast for both me and the students. And it makes my class a very like fun, welcoming, learning environment for my students. So if you are unfamiliar with active learning or you want to learn a little bit more about it, I dedicated a whole episode of this podcast to active learning. And it was actually episode one of season one of this podcast. So I would recommend going back to episode one, season one, to learn a little bit more about active learning. Now, once you have figured out, okay, what your goals are for the semester, now it's time to think about the format of your class. Is it going to be a lecture-based class? Are you going to have some group work? Is it going to be a very discussion-heavy class? Will there be group projects, solo projects? Think about the structure of the day-to-day -day class and kind of map that out for yourself. I know in a lot of my classes, I have a lot of pre-class work where I just want to make sure the students are engaging with the material before they get to class. So I have a pre-class assignment or pre-class notes that I have students do. Then my students come in, ask me questions about their pre work. I give a little free cap of what they need to know. And then I mostly have my students working in class and then take questions at the end. I'm also teaching another class. I'm teaching applied linear algebra. It's more of an upper level or mid level math class. And there is a bit of pre work. There is some videos that I like for them to watch before class. But in class, it's a lecture based class. And so I am up there talking and writing for most of the time, asking them for feedback throughout, of course. But I always still value group work. And in this class, the students are really making that transition for the very first time between strictly computational math and more theoretical math, where they have to actually write using words and prove and justify their answers. And I find that the students in this class really struggle making that transition from computation to justification. And so I really like to give them a lot of time to practice justifying their answers in class. So every other week in this class, I have group work day. So every other Wednesday, I don't do any lecture at all. I have put the students in groups, they work on some problems together, they work on their definitions together. And then at the end of that class, they take a group quiz together just to make sure that they can justify their answers. So what's going to be happening in your classes? Like, day to day, what's the structure and the format of the class? That's something to figure out first. And once you figured out the structure and format of the class, 
Well, what kind of classroom do you need to make this happen, right? Maybe the tiered classroom with stadium seating is not very helpful. It's not helpful for me when I do group work. I need a classroom with movable desks. I need to have plenty of board space. So what kind of things do you need in your classroom? And then I always encourage actually going to the classrooms and looking in your the classrooms that you are assigned and check it out. Can you actually do the things that you planned in that classroom? Or do you need to get your class moved to a different classroom? I know my school makes it really easy to do that. You should check to see if your school makes it easy for you to switch classes. Like if your classroom is in your department building, it may just be as easy as talking to um, one of the office people um, in your department and have them switch the classrooms. For me, we have a very big department with a lot of classes. Math is a service department, so we're teaching all over the place in different buildings. So I actually have to contact the university scheduling people, and they're quick to help me switch my classrooms based on the features that I need. So take a tour of your campus. Go find your classes before the first day and make sure that the classroom is actually appropriate for the type of teaching that you want to do in your classroom. All right, now, once you've figured out kind of like the format and what kind of classroom setup you have, now you can map out your lessons. So you don't have to get very detailed and write your lecture notes yet, but which topics are you gonna cover in which portion of the semester? I strongly encourage creating a little schedule so you could do like an excel file with all the dates that you're teaching or you can just draw out a little calendar and say i want to do this lesson on this day and we're going to have a test on this day also match it up with the university academic calendar you don't want to be scheduling class or a test on around a holiday or a university big event right you want to make sure that students are going to be able to be in class and participate that you in the way that you want to and you want to make sure you have room to do the things you need to do so for example maybe you really want to have a test on february 3rd but maybe you haven't covered enough material <laughs> um, to put on a test on february 3rd so you really want to kind of map that out so map out what you want to teach when you want your tests and assessments to be and just figure out kind of like a rough sketch of your schedule, right? You don't need to share this with your students. We're not there yet, but this is just for you to help you with your planning. And also look up the final exam date and time. You're gonna need this information when we move to the step of putting things on your syllabus. Also, it helps you with your end of semester planning so you know when you can travel. All right, so once I have my lessons kind of mapped out and kind of the structure of the course, I like to figure out my grade breakdown and my grade categories. Like what categories of things will I be grading? Will I be grading exams? How many midterms exam how many midterm exams will there be? Will there be a comprehensive final? Will the final be optional? Will you have regular assessments like quizzes? Will you have any like written homework? In class work, will you count that for a grade? Will you count participation as a grade? Will you require attendance? What kind of things are you grading? Go ahead and map that out. Make sure it adds up to whatever you wanted to add up to. If you're doing points or if you're doing 100%, make sure it all works out and makes sense. And make sure that the weights actually make sense as well, right? If I value tests like, um, summative um, assessment, so making sure the students understand everything by the end, that should be a significant weight compared to maybe smaller in-class assignments. But if I really value in-class assignments and I really want my students to be there, then maybe I'll weight those a bit heavier than maybe like 5% if I really want my students to be there for those in-class things. All right, so now that we have all this background work done, I find that writing the syllabus is easy. So the next step is write the syllabus. Now you can just bring in all of the stuff that you've already thought about and the syllabus doesn't take as long to create. Also, I never create my syllabi from scratch. I literally just duplicate the file of the previous syllabus from the last time I taught the class. Or if I've never taught the class, I find 
another professor's syllabus. You can email them to ask them for their syllabus, or you can ask um, the university system, because I know my university keep access to submit our syllabi every semester. So there's a repository of all of the syllabi for the classes. Maybe your school has that, maybe it doesn't, but you can always ask someone. And if you don't feel comfortable asking someone, you can always start with a previous syllabus that you've used even if it's for a different class. But I recommend not starting from scratch because why? <laughs> so once I know the structure of the class, I know the responsibilities my students need to have and I have the syllabus done, then I actually like to email my students. I like to email my students, welcome them to the class. I like to attach the syllabus and I say, this is a draft of the syllabus. It could change, but you can use this to get a good idea of what to expect in the class. I also like to give them some tips like this class is pretty challenging, but I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure that you learn math. Here's a video that's really encouraging to help you have a growth mindset in a math class. So I share a YouTube video with them. I also share what materials they'll need. Like they need a three ring binder for their class workbook. They need paper to take notes in class. They need a pencil. And in my class, they have a very specific calculator that they need. And so I like to share that up front before the first day of class. And then this also breaks the ice with your students. They see that you're compassionate. They see that you care about them having a good semester. And so they may actually start to reach out to you after you send this email and let them know, oh my goodness, I haven't taken a math class in a long time. I'm a little nervous. And I may have some resources to help them with that. Or they'll tell me, I have a doctor's appointment on the first day of class. I'm so sorry to miss it. Is there anything I can do to make up the work? Do you Are you going to post lecture notes? And so you can kind of work with those students and get to know them already. And then finally, the last thing that I like to do is choose a first day activity. Now, I have a whole episode of this podcast on setting the stage for your class with a first day activity. That is season one, episode three, and I walk through different first day activities that I've done in my classes. But my biggest tip is whatever thing you want them to do throughout the semester, it's nice to give them a preview of that on the first day. That way they know what to expect in the class and they can determine, mm, maybe this professor is not for me or, oh, I'm excited about this class. I need to make sure I show up every day so we can do more stuff like this. So for me, group work is a big thing in my classes. I do group work every day, sometimes every week. And so I need to show my students that they need to be prepared to work together. So I always do a group activity on the first day of class. So think about what you want your students to do and what you want them to kind of expect to do in your classes. And I would recommend creating a first day activity based on what you want them to do. So my first day activity is always a group work assignment. And I like to show them that they can work together. I like for them to meet their group mates. I always say, okay, get into groups and then take like five minutes, introduce yourself to your group mates. And then they start chatting and it's great. And then I give them the activity or assignment. They're working in groups and it's just a fun experience. And it shows them, oh, I'm not going to be silent in this class. I'm going to be actively learning throughout this whole experience. And it starts on the first day. Now, I hope that this podcast episode has helped you and just giving you an outline and some places to start when it comes to preparing for the first day of teaching. I would love to continue the conversation with you. So if you're watching this on YouTube, ask me some questions. Tell me your plans for the first day of classes in the comments of this video. And if you're listening to this episode, find me on LinkedIn. I'm talking about teaching stuff all the time on LinkedIn. I'll do a dedicated post all about the first day of class. And I would love to hear your thoughts, your questions, and what you have planned. Again, this episode is sponsored by my new independent professor teaching style quiz. Definitely check it out to learn your teaching style. And this could also help you in your courses as well. And then it'll also give you a recommendation of which self-hosted learning experience type is going to be a best fit for you and your personality, because I want it to be as easy as possible for you. So you can find that in the description of this video, in the show notes, and on my website at drtoyandali.com forward slash teaching dash style. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode. Have a wonderful semester and happy teaching.